Hello, my name is Stiley Hayward. I would like to welcome you to the Blessed Hope Ministry. We are a King James grounded family Bible study. These lessons are not to be a substitute for regular church attendance. Nightly I direct my family through the Bible by chapter and verse. We request you to join us and to study from God and His Son Jesus Christ. You may have permission to like, send, or encourage our studies with family or friends. Edification of what God has and what He desires in our life. Study to show thyself approved unto God. A workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly divine the word of truth. You may use our studies, but I request that you do not abuse them. For YouTube videos, subscribe below for more videos. And place the thumbs up and leave a comment or email me. Thank you. Leviticus chapter 12. 12 being the number of Israel, interesting. Genesis 12 began the nation of Israel under Abraham. Now with this, you're going to have to open your Bibles to Luke chapter 2 as we compare these two chapters. As we did the other night with Acts 10 and Leviticus 11, we need to look at Luke 2. And I'm going to make a little disclaimer across the screen right here. I am not going to bash no Catholics. I'm only going to take the Bible. I'm going to tell you what the Bible says. Bible with Bible. Scripture with Scripture is going to match just like Acts did with Leviticus 11. And if your doctrine and your teaching does not match what the Bible says, you are at fault, not me. So, Leviticus 12. And the Lord spank. This is God speaking. Unto Moses saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, saying, If a woman have conceived seed. All right, let's go to Luke 2, 5. We're going to take this scripture with scripture. Luke 2, 5. To be taxed with Mary. Okay. Now, guess what we're talking about. We're going to look at Mary. And this would be the teaching that, you know, Mary is with is without sin. Well, we're going to look at the Bible and see what the Bible says about it. So, this is a short chapter, so we can... Leviticus 12 says, if a woman has conceived seed. And Luke chapter 2... To be taxed with Mary, his espoused wife, being great with child. So I can safely say that Mary has conceived with child. Now we know it's not of Joseph, according to Matthew, according to Luke. It's of the Holy Spirit. But she's pregnant in Luke chapter 2. In Leviticus 12, it says if a woman has conceived seed, pregnant. And born a man child. That's a male child. Then she shall be unclean seven days. So let's go to Luke 2 7. About the man child. And she brought forth her firstborn son. Man child. So are we seeing Leviticus 12 and Luke 2 playing out? Have we not wrestled the stretch? The scriptures have we not changed anything? Firstborn son, male child, man child, one and the same. And notice how scripture, scripture gives you the understanding of one scripture that you may not understand to the other one. So unclean seven days, one week after the after the birth of the child, she's unclean seven days. Now, the Catholic teaching is in the conception that Mary was born without the original sin, thus she's sinless. And she's a perpetual virgin her entire life. We're not going to talk about that virginhood yet. Not tonight. But Mary born without sin, without the original sin, somehow she bypassed Adam and Eve's family. She must be a goddess. Because Jesus bypass 
the man line, the man seed, to be born of a virgin, and yet follows the line of Adam, which you find in Luke chapter 3. Mary, according to Catholic, you can't trace her roots back to Adam because she's a goddess. She has no family of sin. So we've seen already that Mary has conceived, been pregnant. She bore a, a, her firstborn son, a man-child, and she's unclean seven days back to Leviticus 12, too. I wonder how they how they wrestle the scriptures with that one. So she shall be clean. This is again, this is any woman that's born under the law, but we're looking at Mary who's under the law. When a woman Israelite gave birth to a man child, she's unclean seven days after that birth. According to the days of the separation of her infirmity, she shall be unclean. Okay. Remember that we talked about the blood? And, no, I don't think we've talked about that yet. The blood in the issue, if you sat in a doctor's seat, you would be unclean. If you laid upon a bed where somebody bleed, you were unclean. If your wife had her cycle, you were unclean by being in that bed with her. You would hop on a horse of someone that was bleeding. You'd be unclean. When body fluids come out of you, you're unclean. That woman that came to Jesus 12 years bleeding was unclean. But we're looking at pregnancy now. And we're going to point to something that God established. Again, I, these dates are better than what I can come up. B.C. 1490. That God has written against a doctrine that's still taught in 2017 of November 14. It's funny how Mary said in her prophecy when she proclaimed uh, to Elizabeth, people shall call me blessed, the blessed virgin. It's like she knew. Now listen, Mary's a wonderful, wonderful young lady that God used for a very unique, one-of-a-kind, special woman that he had for his son, Jesus Christ. But she's not sinless. She's not the mother of God. He never called her mother. But I'm still going to say she's a remarkable woman. She got saved. Her and John were the only ones at that cross when Jesus was suffering and dying. So I'm not trying to bash Mary. But why do I get on this so much? Because most of my Polish family have gone and died and into hell already because of this worship. My aunt had a murrow on her wall with Mary with her heart sticking out. That used to frighten me. I still don't know what that means. but Okay, so... Let's take verse 3, Leviticus 12. And in the eighth day, the flesh of his foreskin, the child, shall be circumcised. Okay, you ready? Let's go to Luke 2.21. Now we're going to bypass the shepherds. There are no wise men. And what we're going to see here is something that you do not see in a Catholic or Protestant manger scene. Okay, because verse 7, we'll, we'll go back there. Verse 3, she's pregnant. She, she's great with child, nine months. Verse 7, she has brought forth her firstborn son, Jesus, and wrapped him in swaddling clothes. That's the manger scene. And laid him in a manger. That's the manger scene. Because there was no room at the end. All right, verse 21. And when eight days were accomplished, so between... Luke 2, 7 to Luke 2, 21 has been seven days she's unclean. According to the law. And we are told that Mary and Joseph were good when it came to the law. She had to be for God to use her. So the eighth day were accomplished for the circumcision of the child. Now go back. Let's just go. We're going to be flapping back and forth. When the days of purifying are fulfilled for a son, oh, no, I mean, where I? verse 3, excuse me. And in the eighth day, the flesh of his foreskin shall be circumcised. Back to Luke. For the circumcising of the child, his name was called Jesus, which was so named 
of the angel before he was conceived in the womb. Okay? We're looking at the eight days. She's given birth. She puts him in the manger. Seven days she's unclean. Eight days she's in Jerusalem. Presenting that baby. Because you're going to see Simeon and Anna. They're at the temple. They travel from Bethlehem to Jerusalem. And during that time, she's unclean. But we'll take it. We'll, we'll read on. We'll, we'll see what the Bible has to say. So back to Leviticus 12, verse 4. And she shall then continue in the blood of her purifying three and thirty days. She shall touch no hallow thing. Temple? Temple? Hallow things are in the temple. Nor come into the sanctuary. The temple. Unto the days of her purifying be fulfilled. 30 days. Now let's go back to Luke 2. Verse 21. The eighth day, in the eighth day Jesus is circumcised. Verse 22. When the days of her purification according to the law of Moses. Is what we're reading right now. Was accomplished. What did I say? It was 30 days. How many days was it again? Um, 30 days. Between Luke 2, 21 to Luke 22 is 33 days. 30 days. Then you count the eighth day. They brought him to Jerusalem again to present him to the Lord. With the eight days, it's been 41 days already. Scripture with Scripture. Isn't that amazing what you can do with the Bible by studying? But look at what look what Luke 2.22 says. When the days of her purification. And then go back to Leviticus 12. Verse 4. And she shall then continue the blood of her purifying. If she was sinless. What would she need to be purified from? And we haven't even got to the root of what Mary is, according to the doctrine of the said church of Catholics. Now, if I'm without sin, I would need no purification. Jesus needed no purification because he was without sin. But Le uh, Leviticus 12 and Luke 2 both guarantee to say on the 4th, the 30th day during that time from the circumcision the eighth day to the 30 days that woman is unclean but she's a remarkable woman but she's unclean you cannot give her the title of sinlessness now i'm, I'm going to try to be respectable i don't know much about mary but every time she had her time of month she was unclean are you going to tell me that she never had that? And then that would re that would eliminate the fact is, according to the Catholic teaching, she never had any children. But the Bible says she had children. And in order to have brothers and sisters of Jesus, she had to have that time in a month. And each and every time of that time in a month, she was in unclean. And then when she gave birth to those children... The sons. Let's look at the sons. When she gave birth to those sons, for 30 days she was unclean. The children of Joseph. 30 days. What about his sisters? They said he had sisters. Uh, Solomon. Uh, Solomon. The female version of Solomon was one. Is, so let's let's read what the Bible says about Jesus' brethren. Ready? Verse 4. And she, sh she shall continue in the blood of her period purifying three and thirty days she shall touch no hallow thing nor come into the sanctuary under the days of her purifying be filled that's the man child that could be the blood that that could be the brothers of jesus you ready but if she bear a may child she also had daughters isn't that unique how that is put the son is first before the daughters. What if she bear a maid child and she she gave birth? I don't care what you say. The Bible says he had brothers and sisters. Then she shall be unclean 
You cannot say unclean and sinless and put them in the same sentence. No way. Two weeks, as in her separation. So a daughter, you're less clean, unclean, than you are of a male child. 30 days for a man child, two weeks, 14 days for a male child. And with that, just to give birth, 30 days and two weeks, you're unclean. As in her separation, and we'll get to, we haven't done it yet, we'll get into bleeding and uh, body fluids and leprosy. Leprosy is the next chapter. You're unclean with leprosy. If the gooiness of leprosy, and the Bible says you're to put your finger under your nose, say, unclean, unclean, unclean. Are you telling me that there never been sinners? Oh, no, 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 can't say that. But then how do you put Mary unclean when she's had a son? Okay, let, let's forget the daughter. She's had a son. The Bible just said she's unclean. She can't go in the sanctuary. She can't touch no hollow thing. You can't do that without sin. You got to be a sinner to be unclean. And we take the fact that the Bible says she had sons and she had daughters. She's unclean. And we haven't even got to the tip of the iceberg yet. So, as in her separation, verse 5, and she shall continue in the blood of her purifying three score and six days. So there's that two weeks where it was seven days for a boy on the eighth day that boy is circumcised. And then she then they go through 30 days unclean after the circumcision. But for the maid child, there is no circumcision and it runs 36 days. God's, uh, how can I say this? Be clear. God's giving that woman for just that massive thing of giving birth. God's giving that woman, like, uh, husband, lay off her. She's not ready. Give her time to heal. And with all that bloody afterbirth, she's unclean. You would have to say that when, when Mary gave birth to Jesus, as the Catholic teaching, it was completely clean. He came out this rosy red and no blood at all, no afterbirth. Ridiculous. When you wrestle with the scriptures. Have fun with that one. If you're going to talk to a Catholic, say, you know, did Mary have afterbirth? If they answer yes, then their doctrine of sinlessness. <laughs> you nailed them. Okay, verse 6. And when the days of her purification were fulfilled, purifying, purification, purifying, she's got to be guilty. For a son or for a daughter, she shall bring a lamb the first year. All right, let's go to Luke 2.22. Let's see what happened with Mary. Luke 2.22, when the days of her purification matches what we just read. According to the law of Moses, that's what we're in. With the conference, they brought him to Jerusalem and presented him to the Lord. 41 days now. As it is written in the law of the Lord, every male that opens up the womb shall be called holy to the Lord. And to offer a sacrifice according to that which was said in the law of the Lord, a pair of turtle doves, or two young pigeons. And you got that? Did you get? Write down two turtle doves in your mind and two p young pigeons. Write that down in your mind on the back of your hands. Because now we're going to blast the sinlessness, the immacul immaculate conception. We're going to blow that out of the water with all the weaponry on the battleship and all the airplanes on the, on the aircraft here. We're going to blow it out of the water. And if you can witness to a Catholic and show them this and show them Leviticus 12 and God will give them a heart and the Holy Spirit will give them the spirit of wisdom of the scriptures, you got them thinking. So verse 6 in Leviticus 12, remember what Mary brought. She brought a pair of turtle doves and two young pigeons. Remember, that's important. So we'll go back to verse 6 in Leviticus 12. And when the days of her purifying, the purification are fulfilled. For a son or for a daughter, she shall bring a lamb.
Let's look at John 1.29. Let's see if this is Mary. John 1.29. As long as you remember the turtle doves and the pigeons, I don't think we need to go back to Luke, but we may. Uh, John 1.29. You're to bring a lamb. John 1.29. This is John speaking. John the Baptist, the cousin, something like that, to Jesus. The forerunner. Isaiah 40. And the next day John seeth Jesus coming unto him and says unto him, Behold the Well golly gee, Mary had a little what's it say? What's it say? She had a lamb. Mary had a little lamb. And it says over here in Le in Leviticus shall bring a lamb. Did you know it says in Luke chapter 2, she brought Jesus? Uh, let, me, let me go read back and read. And I guess we're going to have to go back to Luke. Luke chapter 2. Let's see what the scripture says about bringing a lamb. Verse 22, Luke. They brought him to Jerusalem. You should bring a lamb. They brought him to Jerusalem. Okay, let's see Genesis 22, 8. You're to bring a lamb. John the Baptist said, Behold the Lamb of God, which take away the sin of the world. Let's see what Abraham has to say, the father of the Jews, to Isaac. Genesis 22, 8. So the law says, Bring a lamb. And they brought Jesus, again, and they brought him to Jerusalem. They are obeying Leviticus 12. So Genesis 22, verse 8 which has been changed in modern Bibles, so now you've lost the cross-reference. Bring a lamb. You had a son child, you had a daughter child, bring a lamb. Mary, bring a lamb. Okay, and Abraham said, my son God will provide himself a lamb. Read, okay, read with me. For a burnt offering. Ready? Let's go back to Leviticus 12. Let's look at verse 6. She shall bring a lamb of the first year for a burnt offering. When you change that verse in Genesis, you lost the cross-reference. There he is. And what did John the Baptist say about that? That's God. Jesus Christ. What Abraham said, God will provide himself a lamb. John the Baptist, what did you say? It said, it's Jesus. Mary, what are you doing? I'm bringing Jesus. We shall call his name Jesus, Luke chapter 2. So what's the Jehovah Witnesses? They blow it completely out of the water. Just as worse as the Catholics. And we haven't got to the Catholic doctrine yet. Mary bringing the lamb. Mary had a little lamb. John the Baptist and Abraham and Leviticus 12 all say that lamb is God. That lamb is Jesus Christ. And it's for a burn off. How do you like that? Isn't that great? Do you still think the, the Old Testament is boring and dull and dead? Okay, so let's read on. Let's read verse 6 again, Leviticus. It's a wonderful verse. And when the days of her purifying, purification are fulfilled for a son or for a daughter, she shall bring a lamb of the first year. You know, every time she had her children born, and she returned to Drew. You know, every time she brought the lamb. One day they lost the lamb. That one little lamb, they lost him. And they went away. And they came back seeking for that lamb. Where was he? He was at the temple. All right, so bring a lamb of the first year for a burnt offering. 22, 8, Genesis. Oh, my. Oh, my. Let's go back to Luke 2 before we read the next part again. Luke chapter 2, verse 24. And to offer a sacrifice according to that which is said in the law of the Lord, a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons. Right next to that verse, if you write in your Bible, Leviticus 22, verse 6. 12, 6. Oh, no, I said 22. Luke, Leviticus 12, 6. Write that right next to Luke 2, 24. Now, is it kind of funny? Because if you were to break Leviticus 12, 6 down, you would get 6 plus 6 is 12. And then you, get, you got 666 there. And yet you're talking about Jesus. So, 
Okay. A young pigeon in, tw in Leviticus 12 and a turtle dove. Does that match or does that not match Luke 24? Uh, Luke, why I keep, I got 24 in my mind. Does that not match Luke 2, 24? The young pigeon and the turtle dove. That matches. Are you ready? For, for, here we go. Call up the submarines. Come up to level now. Open up the bomb bay doors. Open up the tor torpedo hatches. Get ready to fire. Torpedo loops. And a young pigeon and a turtle dove for a band of Catholic Church. There you go. Sin offering. There it is. Mary and Luke 2 brought a pair of turtle doves and two young pigeons. She is announcing to God and to people at the temple, I'm a sinner. And yet the Catholic Church denies that fact. Leviticus 12 and Luke 2. Pigeon and a turtle dove and she's got the lamb in her hands. And later on, she will believe on that lamb and be saved. Onto the door of the tabernacle congregation in Luke chapter 2, it would be the temple. Onto the priest. <laughs> it ain't the Catholic priest. They got it all wrong. That woman, when she conceives seed and gives birth, she is walking up to that priest. She's saying, here is my turtle dove. Here is my... Uh, a pigeon or here is my lamb I am a sinner and before the door she's announcing all to the people of Israel the congregation are there I'm a sinner when we talk about in Leviticus about that sin offering you're announcing the priest say I'm a sinner the 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 the, the royalty the, the leaders I'm a sinner the congregation I'm a sinner the congreg the common people you go to that door with that offering I'm a sinner Mary I'm a sinner Catholic Church. She's never sinned. Somebody's lying. Onto the door of the tabernacle congregation as an open. That door of the tabernacle is like you, you in the church, you've gotten saved, you're baptized for everybody, your family, and everybody in the church to see you make an open testimony that you're saved. This being at the door of the tabernacle, it's an open testimony to everybody. I'm having fun. Verse 7, we're going to blow something else out of the water, okay? Are you ready? Who shall offer it before the Lord? Jehovah, capital L, capital O, capital R, capital L, and make an atonement for her. It's just for her. It's not for her son. It's not for her husband. It's not for her children. And she shall be cleansed from the issue of, blood, of her blood, all the blood that is involved, this is the law of her that has born a male or a female. Okay. Last verse. Let's have fun. And if she be not able to bring a lamb. Well, she did. In her arms was the baby. Jesus. Let's go back to Luke chapter 2 again. And she brought a pair of turtle doves. Or two young pigeons. Now, what we're we gonna blow out of water now. They draw all pictures of Mary in wealth of purple and finity. She's rich by her garments. And the Bible says she's not able to bring a lamb. Lamb's expensive. Now you ready? Then shall she bring two turtles, that's turtle dove, not the not the creatures with the shells, or two young pigeons. She was poor. She could not afford to buy a lamb at that temple. Remember when Jesus went in there and kicked all the tables over and all the birds and all the animals scattered? They were selling lambs. They were selling birds. And Jesus whipped it out and uh, got them. Drove them all out of the temple. When she went to the temple, she could not afford the price of the lamb. So she brought a turtle dove. And a pigeon. And just so you know, it says two turtles and two young pigeons. Just in case you knew, in Luke it says a pair of turtle doves and two young pigeons. The turtle doves were probably, the Bible says pair, they're probably, I don't know if you say husband and wife or birds. 
and they were just two ordinary pigeons. She wasn't dressed immaculate. She was poor, according to scriptures. And she was sitting because watch, watch, watch. Two turtles, two young pigeons that matches Luke 2, 24. Just in case you didn't get it right the first time. The one for a burnt offering. And there you go. The other for a... She was a sinner. How can you teach that Mary was not sinning, not a sinner, not under Adam and not under the original sin, when the Bible says that what she brought, Luke chapter 2, profess the sin offering. And the priest shall make an atonement for her. Her. You can't say, oh, maybe it was with Joseph. Maybe it was. And she shall be clean. There you go. Now, was that so hard? Was that so scripture with scripture? And this is why the Roman Catholic Church does not want its people to read the Bible. Because, now, let's say you did deal with somebody. I'm just saying, as a, as a person who would be a Catholic. Father, this Baptist showed me Leviticus 12 yesterday and Luke chapter 2. And he would say, well, you know, you're reading the Bible too much. What you got to do is you got to go on what the church's interpretation mm -hmm. and what tradition. And I've had that explained to me. Listen, I dealt with them. I dealt with my priests I had a long time in, in the church I was in. And they will tell you, you are reading your Bible too much. And that Mary being sinless is a tradition. And don't bother to do Luke 2 and Leviticus 12 yourself. Let your priest or the Pope or the bishop, let them explain it to you. My number one thing is for you is if you can get your Catholic friend in the Bible. Now for them, the Old Testament is going to be long and boring and dull. Let them start off with Matthew. Not too long if they will read faith. They will hit Matthew 28, call no man your father. And the priest will get off with that one. But we, I didn't bash nobody. I just did what scripture was scripture that Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit, and God Almighty already knew that people were going to mess and rest with the scriptures and there it is and that's why the bible says study to show thyself to prove in the god why didn't god put leviticus 12 right next to luke 2 he wants you to study he wants you to study to show thyself approved in the god of workmen that needs not to be shamed rightly dividing the word of truth and i believe through the holy spirit i have rightly divided by showing you each place and where they are as we did with act uh, luke leviticus chapter 11 and Acts chapter 10 last night. So where are you going to fall? Are you going to fall on the pages of the Bible? Or are you going to fall upon what man says? I'm going to do what the Bible says. I'm going to put Mary. Listen, Mary was very respectable to be chosen. But she was not sinless. She is not as high as the Catholic Church has put her to be. And if you're going to put any woman in the Bible higher than what the Bible says, not Mary. But J.L., let her be blessed among or above the women. But there it goes. So get this video out for your Catholic friends and all that. And let them hate me for the Bible, what it says. King James 1611 Bible, by the way. And then Jehovah Witnesses, Jesus is not God. Well, what did John say? What did Abraham say? And what did Moses say? What are you going to do? I believe the Bible. 